Welcome, beautiful souls, to our new moon and Capricorn reading. I'm excited to read from the Dragon Oracle today. I'm excited to work with the dragons. I am uh, still battling some pretty dark demons and just a lot of stuff. And I'm, um, I, you know, I'm trying so hard not to get emotional about this because I feel like you guys need me right now. But at the same time, you know, I'm not fake and I'm not, I, I'm not a phony. So if I'm struggling through something, then I have a really hard time pretending, even though I am a great actor. <laughs> I'm like, I don't feel like in this kind of context, that would be appropriate. So I'm going to do my best to get through this, and I just want to say welcome and happy birthday to all of our Capricorns. We are officially in Capricorn season, and now we are done with the fire season. We are done with Sagittarius. Thank you, Sagittarius season. Goodbye. There was a lot of lessons, a lot of harsh energy. I don't know about you guys, but I've never been so happy to be done with fire energy in my life. And I'm so welcoming of the earth energy. Also, take a chance. Um, take a chance. <laughs> take a chance. Uh, take a moment and meander over to the shorts section and look at earth part one. It was welcome Capricorn season. I, I recorded a four part series of earth like that. Four different shorts that I will be putting out one a week over Capricorn season. So you might want to subscribe if you're interested in that. If not, just when you come back, make sure you check those out um, because spirit is having me do an earth series. So we are grateful for this earth energy, <clears throat> throat chakra. We are grateful for this earth energy as we connect to mother earth, Gaia, to source. I am grateful for the dragons to bring us back to earth. Grateful to start a new moon cycle with dragon energy because I need it more than I've ever needed it in my lifetime. I love you guys so much, you know. But um, I am I am battling some dark, evil stuff right now, like beyond anything that I thought. Um, and also be mindful what you summon, because uh, we had a situation several months ago where um, our landlord wanted to work with demons and darkness and like thought what I did was cool and all that. And I'm like, it's it's not, though. Um, I'm like, you don't want to battle with things or summon things you don't understand. And they just kept summoning it. And I realized recently why I feel like we're having so many problems is because he has summoned this energy and it's his property. His name's on the deed. So um, the fuckery that's been going about and the fact that we're still in the RV is like, I like, I literally lost my mind and I mean, it's been a long time since I've felt this completely unglued and ungrounded. Um, I'm working through some really dark, heavy stuff. So I'm just being honest with you guys. I know that a lot of you rely on my joyful happiness. Uh, a lot of you have reached out to me. I haven't responded. I'm just, I don't know what I'm going through or what I'm wrapping up for this Gregorian cal calendar year, but in real time, it is December 23rd and we are three days into Yule and a few days, uh, well, tomorrow's Christmas Eve and the day after that is Christmas Day and then Boxing Day, whatever you guys celebrate. Um, well, yeah, like I can't even get in the festive spirit. Like I've never felt this dark around Christmas that I, the, actually, no, the last time I felt this dark around Christmas is when my father died which is really interesting because that's what I'm dealing with right now is I'm dealing with this perpetual masculine patriarchal outdated energy um, of my father that's being, you know, relived through my landlord and just experiences that are so fucked up and so dark that I'm just like, like I just threw the towel in this week. I was just like, you know what? Fuck off. Like everybody just fuck off. Like I was just like, I'm, I have, I have nothing left. I'm like, Every vampire has sucked every ounce of good, every ounce of blood, every... I was like, you win, darkness. You fucking win. I'm like, just come take it. Just fucking gnaw, eat me alive. And that is what has been happening. It has been like this. That's what it feels like. Like I'm being eaten alive. And I just was like, you know what? I have to succumb to this because it's not going away. It's just getting worse. And... um. Today was really hard for me to pull this together. I really just want to quit my channel. I kind of just want to quit everything. I'm just like, I'm just done. 
And I know that's hard for you guys to hear, but even I get to a point where I'm just like, I can't fight anymore. There's nothing left. Like there's, there's literally nothing left. So starting a new moon cycle in an earth energy, I welcome because I just, I don't, I'm not really sure what's happening. And I'm just going to share with you what really, I was already struggling, but then we got this like horrible cold that came in. It was 15 degrees outside. We were, it was unreal what we had to deal with. We had to go to the laundromat. We had to like, we had to white knuckle it there on icy roads. Like it was, it was just like a few days of just constant stress and just, it was really heavy and really dark and I was just really frustrated because I saw it and I wanted things to be different and they didn't go the way that I was hoping they would. And it just made everything a hundred times harder. And then I'm in the laundromat and the news is on and there's all these people in there. And I saw the story about the 13 year olds, the 14 year olds and the 16 year old teenage girls that stabbed a man to death. And I, I literally snapped like something inside of me broke. I started hysterically crying in the laundromat. I was like, I hate humans. I'm like, I hate it here. I'm like, I fucking hate this place. I'm like, this place is dark. I'm like, this is sick. I'm like, what is happening? I'm like, what is happening? I felt like the the older daughter in Poltergeist when she's like screaming, what's happening? Like, that's what it felt like. I felt like the my insides bottomed out. And I just I I told Alder, I'm like, I can't do anything anymore. Like he had to help me finish the laundry. Like I couldn't, like, I just like broke. I, something broke inside of me. And the next morning we woke up and literally there was like our, all of our windows were frozen. Like everything was, it was freaky what we had to deal with. And, um, our landlord called at like 848 and I'm thinking he's calling to be like, oh my gosh, like, how are you guys doing? Are you okay? You know, blah, blah. No. He's like, can you move your fucking car out of the way so we can get up the road? He's like, our well's frozen and we have no water and we need to get some tools from up at the cabin. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, I'm like, I'm like half asleep. We just woke up. We had like the most horrible freezing night. And I was just like, nothing like, how are you? Are you guys okay? It was just this like, move your car out of the fucking driveway. I'm like, how can we move it? It's frozen. I'm like, I'm like, we barely like you guys, we have to like go up this like hill and we barely made it up the hill. I was terrified we were going to fly back down into the freeway and like kill ourselves or other people. Like it was that kind of dangerous. You know what I mean? Like really dangerous. And then for them to say that I was like, you couldn't get up there if you tried. I was like, it's a fucking ice skating rink. And he's like, well, I didn't know that. How would I know that? And I was just like, I don't know what happened, but I was just like, oh my God, like, oh my God. I just, I just lost my mind. I was just like, everybody has lost their fucking minds. Nobody cares about anybody anymore. I'm like, I, I, yeah, I just like hung up the phone. I I was just, I looked at Alder and I'm like, I'm done. I'm like, there has to be a new word f- for the word done and how I feel right now with humans and their fucking craziness and their selfishness. And there's like, that's like psychotic. Like, obviously our car is, it's so obvious that our car is stuck. And he's like, well, I'm not there, but he made it sound like he was there. And he had sent like his lackey guy, like to come up in the fucking truck and try and get this thing to fix the, his well, because their well, their water had frozen. And you know me, I don't wish, you know, I just fucking posted something about karma and accountability. I don't wish ill on others, but man, I was just like, fucking karma is very real. Like we've been without water. We've been without power and nobody seems to fucking care. And that's why I was just like, and I was finished with spirit. I was just like, you don't give a fuck about us. Nobody cares. I'm like, I guess we'll just fucking freeze to death in here. I'm like, I'm done. I was like, I give and 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 I give. And still my fucking, my money's not growing. My business isn't growing. I was just like, I'm done. I'm like, I'm so done fucking giving and trying to help people. I was like, they don't deserve it. I'm like, humans don't deserve it. They're disgusting bio beings. I was like, wherever I come from, I don't belong here. And I was like, and this is fucking bullshit. And I'm like, I am done. And I'm still grappling with that right now. And I'm sorry. And I know you guys rely on me to be like this cheerful, upbeat person, but I'm just not. 
I wanted to go outside and get fresh, beautiful things instead of these that are like dead basically because they've been sitting in here forever. And I just was like, you know what? I don't even fucking care. And it's not that I don't care about you guys. I just, I just don't care right now. And I realized I'm like, sometimes that's where we, where we need to be to heal is to just not care. And, you know, it's funny because out of all the Zodiac, and I don't mean this with malice, but like the people that I've had the hardest times with in my life were Capricorns, Capricorns and Virgos. Um, not saying every Capricorn and every Virgo because people have different things in their signs, but I've had like the bullies in my life, the people who've been, who've been really hard on me or like hard on just the world in general. You know, I was just like, man, I'm like, I'm like, when I think of Capricorn, I don't think of compassionate, you know, but at the same time, I've known some really deep feeling, loving Capricorns, you know, that aren't angry because most of the Capricorns that I knew were bitter. They were very bitter, very angry people. All of them had this kind of what I'm going through right now, like that I've been wronged, like that they've, you know, that they've been, something has, you know, happened to them. They've been dealt a bad hand kind of thing. But that's not every Capricorn. You know why? Because David Bowie's a Capricorn and Elvis is a Capricorn and I can go on and on. And today we are going to work with the Dragon Path because I need some energy, something good spirit. I want to know what do we have to look forward to in this earth cycle of Capricorn in the next moon cycle. And we're also going to have a full moon in Cancer on July 6th. Oh, the first one is father time. Oh my gosh. And for those of you who aren't familiar with the Dragon Path Oracle, um, there are four clans in this deck that she works with. And so I'm going to uh, read to you from this clan. Let me get my glasses. Do you want me to pull more? I feel, I feel like they want me to pull more and then we're going to like kind of go along. Oh, look at that destiny. And they want me to also, um, okay. They say they want destiny on the right. Uh, they also wanted me to point out the numbers. So father time is number four and destiny is 15, which is also the number six. If you add one and, uh, five, I feel like father time wants to come over here. Like almost like he wants to be in front. There we go. Oh, father, look at that. They, I was about to move it. They said, don't you dare. So I don't know about you guys, but I'm dealing with father issues. I've told you this before that our new landlord, it's interesting. Our old landlord was a woman and she was like mine and Alder's mom put together. And this landlord is a male and he's like both of Alder's father and my father put together. He even has my father's birthday. Like it's freaky. And I told him, I said, all the reasons why I don't want to deal with him right now are all of the reasons why I didn't want to deal with my father. And it's almost like they're just not going to give me a fucking pass. Like I have to work through this, whether I like it or not, I have to work through this. And I feel like some of you guys may be going through this as well. And you may have a wonderful relationship with your father, but maybe you have a boss or you have your significant other that you've kind of placed in your life as a father figure. You know, sometimes we put certain um, energies in our path because we need to work through it. So it sounds gross to think that you'd be screwing your father. Um, and no matter which way you, you know what I mean? Whatever you like sexually, but you know what I mean? If you're with someone who is like your father, whether they're divine feminine, divine masculine, doesn't matter inwardly, outwardly, uh, you know, there's something there that's going on. So both of these dragons are from the Earth Walk Dragon series. And I want to read to you about the Earth Walk Dragons. Okay, hold on. Also, when I looked down, it was 1406 and then 1407. So those are our first angel numbers, and they're both um, 11 and 12, if that means anything. So it says, The 16 Earthwalk dragons support us along our physical journey through life. Each dragon in this clan has the nobility of an old war horse, big in heart, kind of eye, huge in power, yet quiet and brave. This description applies to all dragons, but in particular to the Earthwalk dragons. They are the largest clan within this deck. The Earthwalk clan will often represent the action we need to take within our physical reality. This may be in the area of personal growth, 
healing, exploring our potential, or simply accepting that we are all a work in progress. We are all learning, exploring, healing, and developing. But we wouldn't be complete without our spiritual aspect. So they also empower us to seek our spiritual pathway, to follow our hearts, and be open to the possibilities of the universe. In short, the Earthwalk Dragons are all about guiding us to full to fulfill both our physical and spiritual potential. Excuse me. Under their wisdom and gently guiding wings, anything is possible, and they encourage us to believe that too. Miracles do happen. So as you can imagine, I've given up on our miracle. I mean, to me, I'm like, if this means dealing with this guy, I'd rather walk away from this house. Like, I was just like, I don't, I don't want to deal with this anymore. I'm like, why? I'm like, why can't we just go rent a fucking house like everybody else and just pay our money and never see our landlord? I was like, why is this happening? Like, you know, this happened in our last situation. This has been happening with us for a long time. Like most of my life, I would just rent a fucking place. It was anonymous or I would rent a house from someone, you know, and then that was it. But the last like, I don't know, seven or eight years, I have dealt with people who like, there's always some personal aspect involved, you know, like it's, there's an emotional connection to, it's not just someone that we're giving money to live there. It's like some type of emotional connection. So I don't know what you guys are going through, but there's obviously somebody in your life where you have, you know, a father figure that you're having an emotional connection to. And it could even be a Capricorn. It could be somebody that you're dealing with that's a Capricorn because it's happening. You know, the fact that we're, the fact that we pulled a father time card after I was just talking about that. And we are in the process of ripping down and tearing down this old patriarchal energy of control and manipulation and you know it's like no I mean to me it's like if someone was struggling the way we are it's like I'd be like wow I'm yeah you know I'm doing my best you know blah blah he's like we can go live in the house there's no running water and there's no bathroom and there's no kitchen and he doesn't feel sorry for us he literally said that we can just go up there and live and that we're the ones doing this to ourselves I'm like uh, the well's not fixed. There's no water. I'm like, there's literally not even a mock bathroom I could use unless I like got a bedpan. You know what I mean? Like, I was just like, what are you crazy? Like, I, yeah, I can't. Like, I was just like, I can't. Cause to him, he's like 79 years old and he grew up in Panama. And you know what I mean? It's like, he, it's like to him, it's like, this isn't a big deal. I'm like, uh, well, this is 2000, almost 23. And, we are renting it with running. We were under the impression of having, you know what I mean? Like, so it's like, I just, I'm like, how can you have no sympathy or empathy for what somebody is going through? So it was just interesting to me when they were having problems with that. Cause I was just like, karma is instant these days. And like I said, I don't want anything bad to happen to anybody, but I'm getting tired of this bullshit. I'm tired of this old outdated thinking of like, what is okay and what's not okay. Cause as far as I'm concerned, like what we're going through, it's not okay. And you know, I told Alder, I'm like, I want to walk away. Like, I'm like, I'm done. Like, I don't want to fucking deal with this anymore. But then, um, yesterday I had this moment cause I had like cut spirit off completely. I was like, I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't want to, I'm like, don't come into my fucking thoughts. Don't talk to me. I was so angry. And then this one guide came in, in the most gentle, loving way and said, if that person wasn't your landlord, would you still want this house? And I was like, yeah. And they're like, just get through this. It's not going to last forever. They're like, just get through this. Just get through this. And I was like, okay. So, you know, sometimes we just have to get through something, but also it's been bringing up all this darkness for me that obviously I had to face. I had to look at all the gross things about my dad. Like I was like having this fight with him as if he was my father, you know, like in my head, I was like fighting with him as if it were like the way I used to fight with my dad. <coughs> Hold on. Sorry, you guys. I'm still, I've never, I, I can't remember the last time I was this sick. It's going on almost two weeks crazy. Um, but it makes sense too, because it's like my body's been like fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting. And finally it just gave in. It just gave in all the way around. So here's what the father time says. And it's on page 54, which is also the number nine. Father time is probably as old as the universe itself. This commanding wise old dragon will aid you to still the constant chatter of your mind and just be. His presence supports our grounding and brings focus to the moment. His aim is that we let go of linear time. 
for it is a man-made concept. His energy helps us to enter the void, which is particularly useful during meditation. His message today is, now is now this moment in time is a gift, which is why it is called the present. Allow all time to stop and break your habit of clock chasing, because in reality, there is only now. Let yourself sink a little deeper into the abyss of quiet stillness and let go. The man-made concept of linear time is illusionary. It only serves to fuel the doubts in your life. I am here to guide you to a more tranquil way of being, to be fully present in the moment. He goes on to say, The stresses of your existence are often due to your preoccupation with time. Find your point of center, breathe, and let go. Whether these anxieties are from a lack of time or a feeling of not being good enough, nothing is gained by being fretful. Stop setting yourself on realistic timescales and such high expectations. You can achieve without making it so difficult for yourself. You as human doings, dragons refer to us as human doings rather than beings, fail to see that much of your stress is unconscious as it is as natural to you as breathing. Recognize this and release it. With this quietness of mind, Father Time aids you in finding clarity in all life situations and helps you to see the bigger picture, allowing you to reach a new level of understanding. 2130 and then 2131. They've been pairing these angel numbers up a lot lately. It's really bizarre. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, that was part of the reason why I was angry. I was like, you know, why am I spending another like holiday season and my birthday in an RV? And this is even worse because I'm like, we have no, you know, we're really, really fully off grid. And it's, it's more than an inconvenience at wintertime. I mean, at 15 degrees, it's like we had to pull everything in because the water was like frozen. And I'm like, we need the water to like, you know, wash up and all that. I mean, it's just, it's just, I mean, I literally feel like a pioneer woman. And I'm like, are you preparing us for some fucking apocalypse? I mean, I'm not kidding. Like, I was just like, what the fuck? Like, it's really crazy. But you know what? I'm glad that we're not up in the house now because we would have been stuck up there for probably like three or four days. I mean, the well, we're stuck up where we are now, but we're only halfway. I mean, the driveway is like an ice skating rink. It is so scary. There's no way I would ever let anybody go up and down our driveway. Like, it's a good thing that he couldn't get past us because if he had tried to get up there, it's so steep on these two turns that I was like, literally, I'm like, I could see a car like flying off the ravine into the trees. I'm not joking. Like, it's, you know, it was fucking scary. And I, and I was like, but then I started to think is, you know, do we want to live here? Do we want to like be in a place like this? And he's like, well, if I had chains, he's like, well, if we had this, well, if we, you know, so I'm like, is this just a learning curve? And I'm just angry. You know, am I taking my anger and my bitterness out on our landlord? Because I'm like, we should have been in there by now, you know, but the truth is the well could be frozen for all we know. I have no idea. Maybe we wouldn't have had water. You know, we had to venture out and white knuckle it, you know, crawling along you know the roads to get to our destinations and back because if we don't have propane we freeze to death if we don't have water we can't like drink anything you know what I mean like we have to bring everything in it's been a really stressful situation but now we know like that's good to prepare for that because if we were stuck up there but we had the proper stuff you know what I mean so it's like to me I'm pissed off about the timing but I'm also angry because I just feel like nobody's taking it seriously, like how serious this situation is, you know, all the way around. So I'm dealing with my own stuff. And I know I've been talking about a lot of my own stuff lately. And I'm sorry, you guys, I just don't even know where to put it these days. It's been, it's been pretty bad. So, um, you know me, I, I try to do my best to keep a, a happy face, but like, I'm, I, you know, I'm just like, I'm human. I'm a human doing as well. And I'm frustrated. And that's the hard part. Cause I'm like, well, if I am like this really amazing, powerful light worker on this light being like, why am I struggling so much? Like, why am I suffering so much? Like, is this karma? Is this somebody else's bullshit that I'm just like trapped in, you know? And then there's my, my controlling. I can hear my controlling in there because it's not going the way I want it to. It's not going on my time right? It's going on this father figure's time 
and he's been sick. And then first he got hurt and now he's been sick like we've been sick. And he had to go into the hospital. He was so sick. So, you know, I mean, it's just like, I, well, here we are. You know what I mean? Nothing's going to happen now and it's winter. So I guess we're just like stuck in here and stuck like this. And I just told spirit, I'm like, I don't have it in me. Like I'm broken. Don't you get it? Like, I'm like, I'm done. Like I've given as much as I can give. I am tapped out 100 fucking percent. I'm like, I I'm done. And then to, to fucking hear these teenagers, like what is happening? It's like, I don't care if they were boys. It doesn't matter. It's just in general. I'm like, what is happening? It's like, it is getting so gross and so dark. No wonder why people are offing themselves and killing each other. It's fucking scary out there. That happened in Toronto. I mean, I know that it's not perfect and it's still a city, but it's fucking Canada, you guys. Like, it's not New York or fucking somewhere in Iraq. It's like, that is like, that's a really big deal. And I just, I don't know how to explain how much that killed me. It's as if it killed my child, like it killed every essence of any bit of human I had left in me. And I still struggle right here before you. I'm, I'm being real. You know, I'll pull out of this. I know I will pull out of this, but at the same time, I'm angry and I'm frustrated and I don't understand this place anymore and I'm glad the dragons came in because they are my best friends and I know I come from there I know I have a dragon on my arm I have had an affinity for dragons since I was little oh my gosh my I found this for my ex-husband he was looking for a torch later and I was like I totally forgot I had this I can't even do it because my I'm still so weak I'm like a little fucking chicken look at that though you see that fire oh shit <laughs> it's old. I bought this. It's really heavy though. Um, I bought this in Los Angeles years ago at like a gas station. I remember I was like, I just like had to have this later. I was just thought it was the coolest thing I'd ever seen in my life. Um, but I just feel like call on the dragons, you guys, like if you're needing some power, you need some, you know, or maybe you need to continue with some fire energy. I've had enough fire energy to last me a minute, like for real, like, I don't know. Um, I'm praying that I'm going to pop out of this. I know I will. I mean, I always have in the past, but this one's pretty bad. Anyway, let's get to destiny. Number 15. Destiny is a mighty dragon of great authority. She has no time for fluffiness, ego, or human dramas, <laughs> as she puts it. She and her kind have been hidden in the depths of the earth for eons, waiting for us to be ready to take back our power and stand in our individual and collective might. Yes, thank you, Destiny. She wants to galvanize us into action so that we stand strong against adversity and, if necessary, fly in the face of authority to challenge systems that are no longer fit for purpose. She says, if you want change, you need to be that change, not wait for others to do it for you. You do not need their permission to live your life your way, nor can they absolve you from responsibility. It is your life, your journey, your path. You walk it your way. Light and fluffy will not create lasting changes on your planet. Have you ever tried moving a large square flat bottom stone uphill? It's impossible. As humans, you need to come together and work in union, not isolation. Take responsibility for who you are. Hold the vision of what you wish to create and work together with others. We are facing periods of change and at times adversity. We as people of earth can only achieve a more secure future if we come together and work for the good of all. We can be the change. The time for division has passed. It is time for us to unite, collaborate, and work in unison. Yeah. Like, I can't. Honestly. You know, I mean, the worst part is, after I saw that, I was like, what, did this dude, like, molest them all or something? Like, and they all just like, and, and even so, I was like, it's such a horrific way to do it, like, out in public. Like, I, I, I don't know. I mean, it's just like, to me that it was just like the darkness just like just enveloped me. I was sickened. I was, were you guys are sick? Like, feel free to comment below, like how you're feeling and what you're going through. Cause like, I was literally like sick. 
sick because I can't, I can't, I just can't. Actramus. Oh, I love Actramus. Actramus is a badass. I believe he's one of the Earthwalk Dragons too. Number 17, Actramus. I'm going to put Actramus in front of this guy. <laughs> I'm like, thank you, lighter. That, so let's go, let's go talk to Actramus. My flash went out in my phone, but I brought my trusty, dusty little lamp in and they're going to put a light on Actramus. And actually, Actramus is the first of the four galactic dragons, which are the connectors. And I'm going to read a little bit about them. So within the Dragon Path Oracle, we have four representatives of the galactic dragon clan. Although they tell me that there are others as well. However, however, it was Actramus, Luna, Crystal, and Lord Kathumi who showed themselves to me and requested I include them in this deck. As their name implies, the galactic dragons are not of this world. They work out in the galaxies of the universe within, among others, Lord Kuthimi, who is a dragon elder and spokes dragon for the Galactic Council. I was surprised that Lord Kuthimi requested to be present in this deck, given his high status and importance, but you don't argue with a light being on that level. The galactic dragons work with us on a higher spiritual vibration, connecting the light matrix within us, within those of the earth and the universe. It's these dragons whom we call upon for earth healing and grid work because they encapsulate the qualities of compassion, understanding, peace, and healing. Lifting the vibration of our planet and humankind as a whole, they often connect to their fellow light beings and to the crystal skulls. In short, these dragons aid us on the path to spiritual enlightenment or ascension through helping us to connect vibrationally with our planet and the universe. So... Let us move on to our friend Actramus. Actramus connects with the Arcturian civilization, the peacekeepers of the galaxies. This beautiful dragon announced himself to me by stating, I am the dragon Actramus of the seventh golden ray dimension. I am kin to the Atlantean dragons who were the seventh dimensional but chose to work with the fifth dimensional beings of Atlantis and oversee the raising of their vibration of the seventh dimension. If Actramus has joined your reading today, heed his words. The time has come for you to begin integrating with the seventh dimensional golden ray energy and initiate the process of anchoring its frequency into your being. This will enable you to shift the old layers of 3D energy and release it naturally. It heralds the next phase of your incredible journey. Holding a clearer vibration allows us to view the world without judgment, be at ease with ourselves, and let go of negativity. By accepting Actramus into your life, you are acknowledging you are ready to shift old DNA coding and integrate the higher vibrations into your life. So while you're meditating, call upon Actramus and the seventh dimensional um, energies, all of that that we just spoke about, call on Actramus to come in and help you. I know I need help myself. Like I, you know, I haven't felt this suicidal in a really long time. Where, you know, before I had different reasons of why I felt that way. But this time was more like, I cannot live in a place like this anymore. I was like, this is just so grotesque. I'm like, I, I can't. Like, I don't know how. Like, I literally, like, I feel that I am on, like, two speeds right now. I am either going to go fully all love in and, like, just completely, you know, jump ship of any third dimensional energies, relationships, and you know, or, you know, or I'm going to like go fully to the dark. And that's just like, I, where I felt like I was like, I was just like, I don't know where to go right now. I don't know how to live here because I'm like, I'm going to go so South side Chicago, Kelly and people's asses. Like they won't even know what hit them. Like, I was just like, I'm about to go so fucking dark, like pitch black, dark, you know, where I'm like, I'm going to fuck some shit up. Like, I don't care if I go to prison. I'm tired of this shit dark. Like, that's where I was going. And it got really, sorry, I didn't mean to go that far, but I'm like, fuck it. I guess the dragons wanted to come in. So there you go. Um, you know, and even, you know, my significant other, I mean, he could tell, like, I was just like, I can't, I'm, I'm not joking around anymore. Like, this is grotesque. I don't want to be in this anymore. I don't want to deal with this anymore. And my arrogance and my ego is that I feel like I'm above it. Like that I, you know, I thought I'd forgiven things. I thought I'd move forward, but I just started to realize that like the pain and suffering of the planet as an empath has just like taken me over. 
and I don't know how to rectify that or like come clean with that. I don't know. So I'm going to be working on that during this whole moon cycle. I am going to be working with, you know, staying in my light, staying away from people and places and things. Because what's been stru what's so stressful for me is that it doesn't matter how light I stay. It's like, Every other day, there's some other drama with our fucking landlord and his problems and his life. Now his whole fucking family came out for the holidays. God knows what that's going to be like or how long they're going to be here or what's going to, you know what I mean? And I was just like, I don't know when our stuff's going to get done or if it's going to get done. And um, I, I just, I'm so angry about it. I'm like, I, cause I can't imagine that. I just can't imagine being a slumlord like that and just like not and not like understanding like what a horrible situation we're in and not even like trying to rectify it to me that's like that's a fucking demon that's a that's a dark energy that's how I feel right now so I'm sorry I'm spewing my shit on you but that's just how I feel and I know that I need to work through this I know that only time can work through this I felt like before I could talk to him about things but now I feel like I can't talk to him and when I feel like I can't talk to someone, then I kind of just feel defeated. I don't know about you guys, but like, if I can't talk to you, then how am I supposed to communicate? Like, if you're not going to listen to anything I say, if you literally are telling me you don't care about us and you don't care what happens to us, I'm like, how am I supposed to give a fuck about you? So we're supposed to care about you and your family and what you're going through, but we just, we don't mean anything to you. He's like, well, my family comes first. It's like, oh, okay. And, but you know, a few months ago, we were his family now. It's like, so I guess I see, and it's just, my dad was the same way. He like abandoned me and my mom and our family and went and started a new family, you know, and found out that fucking shit rolls downhill. And it doesn't matter if you're a shitty person, you're a shitty person. And if you, you know, I, the thing that drives me crazy is the people who tote themselves as really good people, but like deep down, they're really shitty people. You know, if you have to keep fucking telling somebody you're a good person, you know, doth do protest too much as I always say so that's kind of where I'm at with that right now but at the same time I'm like I do want this house and I do want this property so this is what we have to deal with this is what we're going through and it's not easy and nothing in my life has been easy nothing so either I've got a shitload of karma to pay back or I'm just deciding to go through all this hardship now so that I never have to go through it again I don't know but I'm still in like the end of my shadow and my darkness and I'm angry and it's interesting because right when I was about to give up, Spirit drew me to look at this one reading. And I'll put a link below that Dee did. And it was called, um, it was four different candles for, it was a pick a reading. And it was like, pick a candle. Sorry, I had to cough. It was um, pick a candle to lead you out of the darkness. And Spirit was like, please just watch this one reading right now. And it was like, nailed it. Number four. I like, like sent her money and like a note and like thanked her because I was like, if you don't even know how much I needed this right now. And it was this moment where spirit was like, yes, you were done wrong. No, it wasn't supposed to go down like this. I'm sorry that this is happening to you because one of the cards in the reading was revenge. And I don't think of myself as a vengeful, revengeful person, but man, it's like bringing out all this old, it's like, it's, it's not just mine. It's my ancestral shit too. Like I can feel it. It's like this anger, this darkness that does not feel like mine. So if you're going through that, most likely you're going through some type of ancestral bonding of your past and your present and trying to squash it so that you don't bring it into your future. So while we are going, I, I don't think it's an, it, an accident that we have a new moon that's starting in 2022, you know, like it's kind of bizarre that we're having the first week of our new moon in Capricorn is, you know, 2022, and then we'll be moving into 2023. And just like anything else, it takes a minute for us to shift through. Like I always say that through the moon cycles with the new moon, you don't just go from the moon in Sagittarius to moon in Capricorn. We need that week to kind of like get into that energy and to change the elemental energy within us, you know, to align with that earth energy, no matter where you live in the Northern or Southern hemisphere, it's like the Capricorn is still happening at the same time. We are in earth energy right now. We're in an earth uh, moon cycle right now with this energy because it's so close to the beginning of uh, Capricorn season. It's aligning with the moon. It's really powerful. So take this time, set your intentions for new beginnings, but also release all of the things that you need to let go of. Get angry. It's okay to be angry. 
that's what I got from that reading was that it's okay for us to be angry right now. We just don't really hurt yourself and don't hurt others, right? It's a scream, yell, cry, do what you need to do. Like I had to scream and yell and cry and work through that. I had to cry and pray for those babies that would lift a knife to fucking stab a grown man like that. I don't, I just couldn't, I know shit like that happens every day all the time. I know that it does, but it just, you know, sometimes you just hear the one thing at the right time or the wrong time, but it feels, you know, or the feels like the wrong time, but it's like the right time where we have to hear that this patriarchal energy has to die. It was almost like that guy was like a symbol and I feel bad for him and his family. Like, you know, even if he was a monster, and he needed to be taken down. I don't know. I have no idea. I don't want to know any more about the story unless it's brought to me naturally. Um, I can't. Like, I can't. As an empath, like, I was just like, no. I. It just, it broke me. So, um, you know, I have to believe that there was a loving, gentle energy in those children at one point. Something turned them to the point where they would pick up a knife and stab another human being in the street. Something needs to change. Like, all of us have to change ourselves. We can't just sit back anymore and act like nothing is happening. We have to move forward. As Actrimus says, like, you know, we have to move forward and we have to elevate ourselves away from that energy. And, you know, it made me realize, like, even the, the laundromat's not safe for me. Like, that's not a safe place for me. You know, the news was on. You know what the interesting thing is? Like, no one was in there because of, like, the storm. It went from being like no one was in there. I had on Masterpiece Theater, All Creatures Great and Small. I'm like watching something, you know, like that. And I'm like trying to stay positive. And then I was drying stuff and I came back and somebody put the news on. And it happened so fast. And then all of a sudden it was like, I felt like all of a sudden there was like 10 people in the laundromat. And everybody was watching that story. And nobody was, nobody was mortified. There were old ladies in there. There were young men in there. There were all different ages. There were regular, like, quote unquote, like everyday people. And then we had people who you can tell were home free. Like it, I was like, I'm like looking around the room. Like I'm like sick to my stomach and nobody, it's as if they just like, that was normal. I'm like, when did this become normal? When did any of this become normal? And I know that the horrific things have happened throughout history and through time, and it happens every day all the time. But I just, when did it become okay? When did, become, when did we become so desensitized to something like that? We must change. We are the change. If not us, who? If, us, not, if not us now, when? So I'm asking you to, to move forward with me and move past this and pray and, and, and talk to each other and talk to me, like, talk to me. If you need to talk to me, even if I can't respond right now, we're not going to pull any more cards. Um, you can still email me. I'll get back to you eventually. You can text me or message me if you have my number. Like I will get back to you eventually. I'm just, I'm working through my stuff too. We needed the dragons today. And also remember that father time and the patriarchal energy is not just this earth energy right now. This divine masculine on earth that's been running earth into the ground forever. The lights are coming back up. We are shining the light on that. Harvey Weinstein just got another thing for rape. I mean, things are happening. It just doesn't feel like they're happening when we see things like that. You know, because my first instinct was like when I saw that about the little girls, I literally thought, they because one of the things they said was they didn't know each other and I was like what how do you I'm like something then I'm like then this is like some teacher who molested all of them and they decided to do this or you know what I mean like I was just like what the fuck and if you know the story feel free to tell me below I can't go back on the news it made me realize why I don't go on the news anymore why I don't like it's I, I can I can barely go outside of my own like I barely even want to be on YouTube anymore there's just too much ugliness Stay in your light as much as possible. Stay in your world as much as possible. And when you see things like that or hear things like that, pray. Just pray for them and pray for us and just keep looking up to the stars. I, I know it feels like we're alone, but we're not. We are here. And things sometimes just have to get grotesquely worse before they get better. And I think the reason why Sadhguru and a lot of other um, astrologers are saying like, you know, a lot's going to change in the next two years. Think about it. Two years from today is another election. Not today, but two years from like the end of this year. You know what I mean? Like we'll have an, another new president in the United States. 
So Biden's already halfway through his term and, you know, and I don't know what's going to happen. You know, I kept having visions of him dying while he was in office and Kamala Harris becoming the new president. And that might just be what happens. I don't know. Um, but I don't want anything bad to happen to anybody, but I just had some really ugly, dark thoughts that were coming through my mind, just really ugly things. And I have got to focus my energy in the light. And I promise you, I will do my best to be the best version of myself every time. And I will do my best to be as real with you guys as possible. I'm sorry if I am going through such a horrible thing in front of you, but at the same time, I'm just myself and I'm, I'm not an actor. This is real. This is my life. This is your life. This is our planet. This is where we live. And, um, the dragons got our back and so do the angels. We're not alone. Until next time, take really good care of yourselves and each other. And I promise I'm going to try and work on something really fun. Maybe I'll do a fun pick a reading for um, the year uh, for next year. Uh, right now, I'm just taking it day by day, you guys. I'm doing the best I can. Until next time, take really good care of yourselves and each other. Love yourself and love each other even when it's hard. Just do it as best you can and get angry when you need to. Nobody's going to judge you. Spirit understands. When I saw that reading, I'm mean, just my last note. When I watched that reading with D, the one I'm going to put below, when I watched that reading, you guys, I literally felt like something had lifted inside of me when spirit was like, it's okay to be angry right now. It's okay to feel revenge. It's okay to watch somebody, you know, doing something horrible to you and you're wishing bad. It's just a normal thing. It's just what you're going through right now. They're like, you're not fucking perfect and you're not an angel here. Like you are a human. So just work through it. Just don't stay in it. Please don't hurt yourself. And if you feel like you're going to, please reach out for help or check yourself in. There's nothing wrong with getting help if you feel like you need it. Okay? I love you so much and I support you 100%. Until next time, blessed be. Oh.